going to be moving in the introduc uh, introduction to resolution number 467, Climate Action Plan, Public Works Director Maya Andrews, Environmental Educational Specialist, Paige Morris. Go ahead, the floor is yours. Thank you. Sorry, I think I just got promoted. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Paige Morris. I'm the city's environmental education specialist. I'm here tonight to provide an update and have some discussion around the city's climate action plan. Next slide. Uh, so tonight I'm just going to briefly talk about some of the edits we made to the climate action plan, um, discuss the implementation plan for uh, the CAP, and then hear some questions and discussion. Next slide. Um, so some of the main edits uh, we heard from the last time we were talking with you all was some of the action language would like to be uh, listed in a stronger verbiage. So um, here is an example of an action we updated under the water and natural system section. Uh, the previous language talked about considering hiring an arborist um, and we changed that language to hire an arborist. Next slide. Under the same section, we changed one action to seek opportunities to improve stream resilience to improving stream resilience to erosion. Next slide. Um, under the same section, one, one of our last examples here is uh, we changed study the feasibility of including climate change predictions to using climate change predictions uh, when we're replacing our stormwater infrastructure. Next slide. Uh, we also heard at the last meeting we were at that we wanted to change some of the language around educating city staff around climate impacts. So we changed one of our actions from assessing city staff knowledge to educating city staff about their ability to act on climate change within their role. Next slide. Um, and then under the buildings and energy section, we um, didn't change the language per se. We just added to make it more clear what some of the intent of the action was. Um, so we added a bullet point to educate city planning and permitting staff on new energy codes and methods for incentivizing the decarbonization in buildings. Um, this would be under an action to continually update building codes as they come about at the state and county level. Next slide. So those are some of the major changes we made to the plan and now I'm here today to provide an overview um, at a higher level of the implementation plan and then we'll go into a discussion on some of those different actions. Next slide. So some of the key considerations for an implementation plan for the Climate Action Plan um, includes about seven different components to successfully achieve our greenhouse gas reduction targets, which are pretty ambitious for our community. We're going to need to strategically phase and implement different strategies and actions throughout the Climate Action Plan. Um, some of the top considerations include looking at different levers. And what we mean by that is, are we going to use capital projects uh, to get some of this work done. We'll be using voluntary um, and incentives such as like education and outreach to get some of these actions done. Uh, we'll be looking at different mandates or requirements to get the actions done. Um, and then in, in coupling with that, we need to look at when we'll get them done. Will it be at a short, medium or long-term range? Who are our different community stakeholders that we'll partner with since we can't go on this journey alone? And then who is going to lead that action at the city? Next slide. The last three considerations in the implementation plan include cost and funding. So many of the actions have an associated cost with them, such as required FTE support or monetary investments. So it will be important to identify how do we fund those actions um, and in what regard do we fund those actions, like I said, through grants or different investments. Um, we'll also need to consider some of the barriers to our actions. Will there be community support for those, bar for those actions? Um, what are the equity considerations when we start to implement some of these components? And then do we have enough resources to begin for some of these actions? And then finally, we're going to look at different key performance indicators to track our uh, climate action plan implementation and to hold ourselves accountable to what we're proposing in the climate action plan. Next slide. So this is a, a reminder slide from last time to show you how it's laid out in the climate action plan. You'll see that there's an action listed in the implementation section, followed by all these different uh, components to the implementation plan, discussing what the anticipated timeline is, what the anticipated cost would be, and who is going to lead that action. 
Um, as a reminder, this is a working document. There are some things we know right now, and there's some things that we will continue to find different resources on later. So there are some slides or some actions that have most of this filled out. There's some that have about half. And again, we are working on filling out this to the best of our ability with the information we have. Next slide. So this is, is just a screen grab of one portion of the implementation plan, looking at some of the strategies and actions in the materials section of the climate action plan. So for example, you're seeing that M1.2.1 is a voluntary uh, action looking at different education and outreach around waste. Um, it's anticipated to be completed in the medium term, which is about two to five years. Par public works and parks are responsible for implementing that portion of the plan. We've identified different potential partners from our community workshops, including Beery and Bark and local gardeners. We anticipate the cost to being about uh, $2 signs, which in the, in the plan it discusses is between $25,000 and $100,000 or different uh, formats of FTE work. And then there's some uh, considerations we have identified from the community, such as you know, doing education outreach in different languages to make sure that the message is clear across the community. Next slide. So um, we received comments and additional requests from Councilmember Tosta late, uh, earlier today about some parts of the Climate Action Plan. And we've listed her requests on the left-hand side of the table, um, along with staff recommendations on the right-hand side of the table. And at the end of each slide, uh, we will pause and hear if Council has any comments to add. And there are a total of 10 comments. So we have the first two here discussing um, different portions of the Climate Action Plan. The first request is to correct typos. And the second correct uh, second request is to, it's a formatting request for the Climate Action Plan. Originally, we included um, two appendices. One was a community engagement appendice, Appendix A, and the other was an implementation plan appendice, which is Appendix B. Um, we are recommending that we remove Appendix A and make it a standalone document on the website because it is a fairly large document and it made the plan a little difficult uh, to be read. And then we are also recommending that we add the implementation matrix to the implementation plan chapter. So we would in effect remove appendix B. Though um, to note the implementation plan will still be maintained by staff internally. Um, and then we will continually update it with new information as it's gathered. So I'll pause right now and I will open it up if there's any comments or questions. Any comments, Council? Any questions? Go ahead, Council Member Costa. Oh, first off, Paige, um, thank you. Um, uh, sorry I didn't get them to you. I, my window of opportunity today was really limited. Um, so I really appreciate you teeing them up here. And I, I like what you came up with. I think that'll make it a much more usable document. Um, and I also uh, acknowledge the implementation plan. I, I, there were a lot of places where I thought, you know, I could add something here um, or, but the fact that it's a living document and you're constantly going to be updating it. I mean, I think you're gonna learn a lot of things along the way. So thank you for you know putting this in the format you're doing right now. Um, and I am very supportive of the suggestion that you just made to um, basically remove the appendices, make this a 50 page tighter document um, uh, more usable. All right, thank you very much. Any other questions, concerns? I will keep going on our document, please. Okay. The next request, number three, is another formatting request. Um, it is looking at the implementation matrix itself. Um, previously, in the last slide that I showed you, it didn't have a description of the actions in a shorthand. Um, Councilmember Tosta is recommending that we add a shorthand description to each action, so you're not flipping back and forth between the tables and Staff agrees and recommends that we can add an abbreviated action language to the implementation matrix. I'll pause and see if there's any comments. Any comments? No, nope, we'll keep moving. Okay. Okay, the fourth uh, request was discussing um, where the CAP can build upon um, an acknowledgement of ex expecting to incorporate climate mitigation and adaptation into other plans at the city. So staff is recommending under the community resilience and well-being focus area, we add a new strategy, C1.3, plan for climate change. And under this strategy, we would add one action 
which would be to incorporate climate mitigation and adaptation as considerations for all city plans. And I'll pause again and see if anyone has any comments. Any comments, Council? No. We're good to go. Okay. Uh, this is, looks like a lot of text, but we're really talking about a recommendation for all four of these different um, requests from Councilmember Tosta. Um, there's a discussion in all from uh, numbers five, six, seven, and eight to include more language around supporting legislation um, at the state level. So we are recommending we add an action under the same uh, new strategy we were recommending in the previous action, C1.3, Plan for Climate Change. And the action language would include supporting legislation that enhances statewide clean vehicle standards, which we had already included in the climate action plan. Um, we're expanding upon that by including um, providing transportation improvements to support the transition to clean energy, advocates for light rail and enhanced bus services in Burien, requires climate actions as a component of comprehensive planning, and allows jurisdictions to adopt reach codes that may exceed state okay. energy codes for residential development. So the council request was to add language to help support our legislative um, agenda at the state. So I'll pause and see if there's any comments or questions. Any comments or questions, suggestions? Nope, we'll move forward. Okay. Um, so number nine is another substance comment. Um, in the water and natural resources section, council member Tosta uh, wrote another action to, or wrote essentially another way to write the action around the arborist. Um, she is re recommending that we change the action language to value and enhance tree canopy cover in Burien to address climate impacts by strengthening and aggressively enforcing Burien tree codes, including additional uh, qualified staff. Uh, staff is actually recommending to keep the current language. This plain language provides structure for specific direction to staff on action and a goal for tree canopy covers already included in the urban forestry plan. So I'll open it up for questions or comments. Go ahead, Councilman Costa. So I just wanted to clarify my recommendation here, Paige and Maya. Um, you know, when I read it, it struck me that, um, and, and I know you changed it to hire an arborist, which I appreciated you doing you know, what I suggested at the last meeting, but it struck me as I read it that um, in some ways hiring an arborist is, you know, the implementation. Uh, I mean, it is the implementation of how do we address the value that we place on trees. Um, and I realized the urban forestry plan and the tree codes are, um, the way that we are going to continue to advocate for tree canopy in the city and try to raise awareness of the benefits of that to addressing climate impacts. Um, but it struck me that there was no place in the climate action plan that it actually says that or, you know, that kind of highlights the fact that trees play a big role in you know, reducing greenhouse gases by you know, absorbing carbon dioxide as well as providing shade. And so I was trying to figure out how to strengthen that while at the same time saying having an arborist on staff obviously is going to be hugely beneficial to helping educate the community. But I, I wanted to see a little stronger language on sort of the benefit of trees um, in our climate action plan. So that, that was what I was trying to get at there. I don't know if there's a different way to do that. And maybe I missed it. Maybe it's in there and I just missed it. Thank you for your comments. Uh, so what I'm hearing from Councilmember Tosta is that uh, there are some language around more benefits of the trees and the sequestration of carbon should be included in the description and the, potentially the water and natural resources section to be highlighted more. Is there any comments from other council members about that? Do they agree? Council? Is there any? So, I only see one thumb up, two thumbs up, three. That's good, four. All right, we're good to go. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, and this is the last. Last request, um, it's another substance request. Um, to summarize, uh, Councilmember Tosta is requesting that we 
have um, somewhere in the plan a way to bring a progress report back to council where they can review metrics and progress annually and to suggest uh, course corrections as needed because the reduction goal of 50% by 2030 is ambitious and will take a lot of time and resources. Um, staff is recommending to add language to the implementation matrix uh, that says city council will review metrics and progress biannually and suggest course corrections as needed. And the reason we are suggesting biennially is that um, it will align nicely with the budget discussions that happen, um, which are very soon uh, this upcoming year as well. So I'll pause and hear if there's any questions or comments. I see a thumbs up. Good to go. Okay. That's the end of our presentation. And those are the comments we received from Council Member Tosta. Is there anyone else who has any questions? Go ahead, Council Member Schilling, and I'll recognize Council Member Tosta. I move to place the Climate Action Plan. Oh, hey, Nancy hey, wants hey, to do I it. Go ahead, Nancy. <laughs> Go ahead, Nancy. Come on, Kevin. Um, I'd like to move to place the Climate Action Plan on the consent agenda at our next Council meeting. Second. Thank you. All right, you've already heard the motion by Council Member Tosta and the second by Council Member Schilling. <laughs> Any more discussion? Go ahead, Council Member Tosta. I, I think I've said enough. I've made you read enough about this. Um, I've harassed the staff long enough. Um, I am incredibly grateful that you've brought this to this point. Um, I, I love the fact that it is a living document and the opportunity for staff and council and the community to um, engage uh, as it evolves, um, as we learn more, as state laws change, hopefully as federal laws change, um, we may make modifications, but I'm proud. I'm really proud that our city has gotten to this point. Um, so thank you so much to the staff and hopefully the council will see the way to adopt this. All right, any other council member? Any other council member, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Okay, those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. And those against the motion, please raise your hand. Uh, those who are abstaining, please raise your hand. Council member Green, I need to get your uh, vote here, whether it's voice. All right. Let me see. I'll just call out Council Member Dean one more time. Here. There we go. Council Member Dean, uh, are you? Oh, you're good. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. So that's a unanimous motion to pass uh, this motion. Uh, congratulations, everybody. And uh, we look forward to continuing to expand this document and continue to move the city forward on our climate action plan. So thank you so much.